Let's take a look at one last example. What if we had this diester, and uh, it's a diethyl ester, and we treat it with ethyl, uh, sodium ethoxide, and we just saw what was going to happen. What, what product can you get? Okay, well, anytime you're reacting something with base, that means we're going to lose a proton, we're going to deprotonate somewhere, and we're going to lose what kind of proton? We're going to lose an alpha proton. We're going to deprotonate the alpha carbon. So this is a symmetrical molecule. It doesn't matter which side we deprotonate. Let's deprotonate uh, over here. We could do that. Okay, there's our alpha carbon. That's our nucleophile. And now, rather than having a second molecule that we can attack, because this has two functional groups, let's see if possibly we can get an intramolecular reaction to take place. Do we have any electrophile internally that's appropriately uh, the appropriate distance away? So let's check. If this is um, our first carbon, this is one, two, three, four, five atoms away from a carbonyl, which is electrophilic. So would, it, would it, forming a five-membered ring be a favorable ring to form? Absolutely. Five- and six-membered rings are the ones that we're always going to be looking for. So what we could do is we can draw a nice five-membered ring, one, two, three, four, five, and number it, one, two, three, four, five, and then just add in our groups on what's missing. So on carbon one, what do we have? Attached to that is where we have our ethyl ester because carbon one was the alpha carbon, so it should be alpha to a carbonyl. And then we, we had a CH2, a CH2, CH2, and then carbon five, what has what? It has the new bond to carbon one, of course. Here we can, we can, we can show it as, a, as the bond that we're imagining forming. So it has the new bond to carbon one, and what else does carbon five has, have? It has an O ethyl, and it has an O minus. So that's what we would get as one of our intermediates after we deprotonated and attacked. All right, we can imagine this attacking and breaking the pi bond up. And where do we go from here? Well, this looks like a charged tetrahedral intermediate. And so we're going to uh, have this collapse with our two arrows. Our O minus comes down, kicks off our leaving group. And we end up forming a ring that still has that same pattern of a beta keto ester that we expect for a clasin. An intramolecular clasin condensation has its own name. It's called a Dieckmann reaction. But it's the same exact um, sort of reaction. Aldol reactions can happen intramolecularly as well to form rings. And uh, a Dieckmann is when we have a diester cyclizing to do uh, an aldol type con condensation. So this wraps it up for part one of our enols and enolates discussion and we'll continue the discussion looking at some uh, some different types of uh, of species so different types of electrophiles that enolates enols and enolates can react with next thanks for visiting educator.com